despite what you might hear from other officials and hospital administrators, if the nurses are telling you that we are not properly prepared, then we are not properly prepared. As you know, the first case of Ebola contracted by an American on American soil was a 26-year-old staff nurse in Dallas, Texas, who was caring for an Ebola patient who sadly uh, passed away. And we now know a second nurse caring for that patient has also tested positive for the virus. Both are now fighting for their lives. In the past few weeks, there have been cases where a patient has presented at a clinic or a hospital in Massachusetts with symptoms or a clinical history that suggests an Ebola infection. If and when the time comes that patients do, a patient does present with the suspected case of Ebola, we need to be fully prepared with the right protective equipment, the correct environment, the safest protocols and procedures, and the rigorous training and education to make that system work. As nurses on the front line uh, responsible for identifying and treating patients with Ebola, as well as providing a vital role in preventing the spread of this deadly infection, we are concerned by reports from our colleagues across this, not only the state but the country that thus far, few have had any training on the issue of what we consider to be appropriate protection equipment, there is no uniform plan in place on how to handle Ebola patients in our state. In short, the nurses of Massachusetts are reporting that we are not currently prepared to deal with this potential crisis. We need to ensure that we are properly prepared to deal with the case of Ebola, which could present at any hospital or healthcare facility. First, I'd like to begin with some of the examples of what does not, really does not constitute Ebola preparedness. Preparation is not handing out a color printed flyer or sending staff an email with links to the CDC website. Preparation is not telling a nurse to lower their expectations that they should not count on the same protective suits used by Emory uh, University or the CDC where they transport Ebola patients. Preparation is not announcing you will do training in four or six weeks. Preparation is not waiting until a patient arrives at the whole hospital with Ebola and has Ebola-like symptoms. Proper preparation means interactive training and live drills for all hospital employees who may encounter Ebola patients with the ability to interact, ask questions, hand on practice in teams, putting on and taking off the right protective equipment with the support of a colleague for nurses to put on or take off the suit in the proper environment in which to treat a confirmed suspicious um, Ebola patient. The, in the infection in Dallas nurse ward the was CDC approved protection gear. It included a gown, gloves, a mask, and a face shield, and while caring for, um, and while caring for Duncan on multiple occasions. We do not believe this, this provided enough protection for frontline healthcare workers who treated Ebola patients. Must be and the, all healthcare workers who treat, I'm sorry, or treat Ebola patients must be provided with the proper protective equipment, including a full body hazmat suit with a hood, including positive pressure HEPA filter gear, including fluid resistant gloves, foot and um, shoe covering. These, shoes, these suits should be available at every Massachusetts hospital since we do not know where a case might present itself. It's important and, and in fact has to be provided at every hospital and nothing less should be acceptable. <coughs> Further, the Occupational Safety and Healthy Administration has meant rules for doming and doffing the protective gear should be followed and properly educated education and training of these standards should be provided. Proper preparation means having adequate supplies on the site at all times. That includes hazmat suits and other personal protective equipment used by those who interact with those Ebola patients, infected patients. Nurses and their colleagues need to be properly trained in the use of the protective gear, as Ebola can be um, anyone who comes into contact with their bodily fluids of that patient are at risk. The smallest slip or the change in protocol in putting on or taking off that protective equipment opens the door for the virus. This is why it is vital that the highest standards be used and, those, and we know that they work. It is essential that we take the correct and necessary actions now to be sure that our hospitals and healthcare facilities are prepared in the event of an suspicion or a confirmation of a case of Ebola. The MA and our members are available to work with the commission as well as other state agencies 
and hospitals to ensure that we are protecting healthcare workers and the public. You would not send a soldier to war without the proper equipment or training, nor should you expose frontline nurses or any health care giver without having them get the highest um, protection that they can. And they cannot do that without the proper equipment. The best way to assure the public that everything that can be done is done, is being done, is to take the steps I have outlined here today. We know we can contain this disease. We know we have the resources to contain this disease. We know it has been contained. And we believe by taking the right actions, we will control this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.